So let's move to the next section. We move from human to micro uh, with quantum music, with the session with uh, Professor Maciej Lewenstein and the uh, composer, sound artist Reiko Yamada. Uh, the title is Randomness, Imperfection, Uncertain in Science and Arts Toward Quantum Music. So please, the floor is yours. Hello. 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 So, um, share the screen. so we share the screen now. Yes. Oop, I cannot see. Share. Yes, but share. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Reiko. We see your screen. Okay. Just full screen and very okay. good. Thank you. It's our turn. So, hello everybody. I'm Maciek Levenstein and together with Reiko Yamada, we will talk today about, to you about randomness, imperfection, uncertainty and unpredictability in science and arts. And we present our ideas toward quantum music. The logos that you can see are the grants that we have in ICFO, in Castel de Fels, to finance this huge uh, quantum optics theory group, which works on many different things, including quantum physics, but also on uh, connections to art, sound art. Reiko Yamada is a postdoc in the group. The, per the dramatist persona who prepared this talk is Reiko, uh, me, and also two postdocs of mine, physicists, Luca Barbiero and Albert Alloy. The, there are three parts of the talk. We will talk about randomness and predictability in classical physics and classical and in contemporary music of 20th century. We will continue of to, to talking about randomness and unpredictability in quantum physics and then related to the even newer experiments in contemporary composition. And finally, we will present shortly our ideas toward quantum music. So let me start with the part one, randomness and predictability unpredictability of classical physics and also related to the same thing, randomness and unpredictability in musical composition. So if you, uh, before starting to talk about randomness, let me introduce two basic concepts, epistemic and ontic uh, randomness. So apparent or epistemic randomness in philosophy is a concept that in which the randomness is the result of our lack of full knowledge about the state of the system that we consider. So in other words, probabilities and stochastic processes are used here as an efficient tool to describe this partial knowledge of the system. The, this is in contrast to the intrinsic or ontic randomness, which is the randomness that per persists even if we have a full knowledge about the state of the system in consideration. So probabilities and stochastic processes are used here as a necessary and inevitable tool to describe our, our knowledge of the system or to describe the system. So if we think about classical physics, first of all, we think that it is deterministic. This goes back to ideas of Pierre-Simon de Laplace, uh, uh, presented here in this picture, who was one of, one of the founders of classical mechanics and who uh, was uh, formulated this famous uh, sentence, the in, uh, an intelligence that could have at, uh, given instance now all the initial positions and velocities of the particles and the forces that act on these particles could, uh, this uh, creature could, uh, uh, could know everything about what will happen in the future with the particles and what will happen in what has happened in the past with the particles because everything was determined. This idea formulated 200 years ago in philosophy under the name of scientific determinism was uh, developed uh, further by uh, Karl Popper, one of the most important philosophers of the 20th century, who was talking about a uh, situation which close physical system at any future instance of time can be predicted. Okay? However, already in the beginning of the 20th century, Scientists like Henri Poincaré uh, 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 have uh, considered the situation that it might be so that even if the, first of all, the quantum uh, practical determinism of uh, classical mechanics is discutable because the systems are very complex, very large, and so on and so on. But even for smaller uh, systems that are highly nonlinear, it may be so 
that the, uh, the day become completely unpredictable, unpredictable. Another scientist who contributed to that very much was Marian Smolkowski, one of the founders of the theory of Brownian motion together with Albert Einstein. He had the concept of Kleine Ursache Grosse Wirkung. Small cause can, uh, be, uh, small cause can uh, cause big effects. And that means that uh, even small error in knowledge of initial conditions of particles, uh, velocities and position may cause a large effect in the future. And this all, uh, of course, uh, is related to what we know nowadays under the name deterministic chaos in classical physics. So to summarize randomness and unpredictability of classical physics, uh, the Laplace determinism is in principle a good idea, but in practice it doesn't work because of complexity of classical many-body systems. In the room in which you are, uh, there are probably millions of billions of billions of particles and uh, describing them with the uh, equations of motion is simply impossible. It's even impossible to start this knowledge about the initial conditions in the memory of the, all computers in the world. So uh, we have to describe this. They seem to us like apparently random. And also, even a small system exhibits strong sensibility to initial conditions, the so-called butterfly effect. Butterfly in Australia uh, can flip its uh, wings, and the weather in, uh, in Genova uh, changes three days uh, later into storms and horrible uh, conditions. So there is also apparent randomness, even in simple, apparently simple systems. And all of that uh, seems that uh, one has to look for other description of classical physics, like thermodynamics or statistical physics. Thermodynamics is a very successful story. We've described everything in average quantities, like heat, temperature, uh, energy work, uh, pressure, and so on. And it re really works very well based on laws of thermodynamics. It goes back historically to the theory of steam engines. It's been formulated by Sadi Car Carnot. Uh, Nicola Leonard Sadi Carnot in the beginning of the 19th century. Rudolf Clausius and Lord Kelvin were very important in developing this theory. Um, they uh, defined the concept of entropy and, in particular, the formulated the second law of thermodynamics, which says that on average in thermodynamical transformation, the entropy grows, the disorder grows with time. The basis for uh, thermodynamics is given by the microscopic theory, which is uh, statistical mechanics, but this also doesn't solve the equations of motion of uh, millions of billions of billions of particles, but rather describes them in terms of probability distribution, probability theory, and so on. And here, uh, of course, the statistical mechanics is uh, the main uh, goal of statistical me mechanics and use is to explain thermodynamic behavior of large systems. The people who contributed to that in the 19th century go from Madame Sclerk Maxwell, uh, Josiah Williard Gibbs to uh, Ludwig Boltzmann. Let me talk about um, also a brief history of use of randomness and unpredictability in music. So John Cage um, is a very important composer who experimented in many different fields. But he's most famous for his work, Four Minutes in 33 Seconds, in which he presented the work uh, for musicians to not play anything for this duration of time. And whatever happens during this time, he considered it as the piece of composition. So the reason he started to explore the randomness in music is because he considered the role of art is the imitation of nature in her mode of operation. And his very first attempt was made in 1951 with music of changes. In this work, he was seeking a balance between rational and irrational. And he tried to bypass a reliance on his aesthetic judgment. And he adapted Ichen and the influence of Buddhist philosophy. So for those of you who does not know what Ichen is, it's an it's a ancient Chinese book that explains a complex random number operation to be used in deviation, divination. So in this work, uh, he has done many other works uh, later, but in this particular work, he used the chance operations for organizing pre-composed materials. In contrast, uh, Pierre Chauffeur, 
uh, he coined the term music concrete and objet sonore. Uh, in his work, he used raw sounds, that means the sounds are not from the traditional acoustical musical instruments, but he recorded nature sound, industrial sounds into the tape and manipulated to form sound structures. And what is important here is that he took materials from the given experimental sound. So this is considered to be a random sound and he used these sounds to construct the musical works. So his work method is empirical and he starts from con concrete and given random sounds and moves towards the structure. So in this way, his approach was a complete opposite to uh, the case took for music of changes. So let's listen to the, the work um, by Shofei. This is called Oazo Rai, and this is from 1950. So for another example, Xenakis is a Greek composer. Uh, he is also an architect and he used mathematics to aid the uh, composition. And uh, he created uh, the different systems for algorithmic and stochastic compositions. Uh, for example, he used the computer's high-speed computations to calc calculate the various probability theories to aid in compositions. And in this way, he created his own random number generator. And this was used to write the scores, and these scores performed by live performers on traditional instruments. And later, he worked on electronic and computer music, but initially, this was how he worked with uh, randomness and unpredictability in music. So for his work and both pieces that I introduced uh, previously, they are based on the deterministic randomness, which relates to what much ex explained in classical physics. So let us now turn to randomness and unpredictability in quantum physics. So I will show you the axioms and uh, point out the ones which really talk about increasing randomness of quantum mechanics. And then I will talk a little about the essence of quantum uh, physics. Uh, and then we relate it again to even more uh, recent contemporary developments in composition. The, uh, what did I do? Uh, sorry, can we see us? No, because I closed. We see you and we see your screen. Ah, you still, okay, you still see us on our screen? Ah, sorry, I just... Okay, okay perfect. Thank you. Was my, okay, so let me uh, return. I wanted to hide there was something in the bottom of the screen that I didn't like. Anyway, so what happens in quantum physics? The randomness is uh, really intrinsic. And here I quoted eight postulate or seven postulate of quantum mechanics from current, current energy book, one of the most famous books on the subject. The important is the fourth one, which says, when the physical quantity Q is measured in a system that is in some state, the quantum mechanics does not predict the outcome of the measurement. The quantum mechanics predicts only probability of the possible outcomes of the experiment. So it's a completely different theory. It is intrinsically described in terms of probabilities. Moreover, the fifth postulate here uh, on the top, uh, which is sometimes called collapse postulate, says that if the measurement of the physical quantity gives the outcome Qn, let's say, then the system is after this measurement in the corresponding state to this outcome. So in another words, if I measure Schrodinger cat and I ask, is he died or alive or she, uh, and I get the answer uh, dead, that means after the measurement, the cat is dead. And if I get the answer alive, after measurement, the cat is alive. Now, what are the, let's say, some of the essential properties of quantum theory? One is particle wave duality which is very nicely represented by this figure in which a drop of water falls on the surface of the water, creating waves. So in a sense, transforming into a wave pattern. 
The same thing when we talk about the particle wave duality. Particles are at the same time wave packets, and so they can interfere and they can form superpositions. The most, fa the most famous uh, superposition is the Schrodinger cat that I mentioned already, which can be at the same time in the superposition of the state of being dead and alive. The next essential property of quantum mechanics is the one that I mentioned in the context of measurement. The measurement affects the measured object. And therefore, if I measure the Schrodinger cat, when I observe it, observation is a measurement, I will see that it is either dead or alive. And finally, the most maybe uh, exotic property of quantum mechanics, this is correlations in um, systems consisting of many parties. And uh, this goes under the name of entanglement. This is a very complicated process, which we are not going to discuss in detail here. But let me just show this beautiful uh, sculpture of Ruth Doch and entanglement, which shows the complexity of, in this case, uh, human relation, but uh, in, uh, in quantum mechanics, this will be complexity of correlations between the two bodies or two systems. Okay, so now I will uh, talk about more advanced treatment of randomness and unpredictability in music. So, for example, Lucier worked with a chaos theory that Magic briefly um, touched on. And in his work, he uses a chaos game on his very famous composition called I Am Sitting in a Room in 1969. In his work, he records himself narrating a text and then plays the re 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 recording back into the room, re-recording it. And a new recording is then played back and re-recorded. And this process is repeated since they enclosed, every enclosed area has a characteristic resonance. The effect is that certain frequencies are gradually emphasized as they resonate in the room until eventually the words become unintelligible. So let's take a listen to the original recording. I am sitting in a room different from the one you are in now. I am recording the sound. I am and this is after 15th time. And finally, a 15 times. At this point, uh, the words are unintelligible and is replaced by the pure resonant harmonies and ends up to himself. In this way, he expressed the chaos theory in music. So, uh, as we looked at uh, in uh, previous slides, so composers had used uh, stochastic methods and other uh, computer-assisted methods to use statistical theory, Markov chains, and chaos theory for algorithmic compositions. In the recent years, composers and music technologists worked on AI systems to further experiment in this direction. And I do not have time to get into the details of these examples, but what I can say is that in all these cases, chance serves only as a tool and the results are deterministic and predictable in a general sense. To that extent, the role of chance is an illusion and no way near to the quantum randomness. But from all we have, the most uh, successful use of randomness, almost uh, uh, farther away from classical randomness to this day is, in my opinion, is cages 4 minutes and 33 seconds. Okay, so let me uh, start the final part, which will be the shortest. Uh, what do we think, how can we uh, use all this idea nowadays uh, to do something for quantum music? So the idea would be to use the quantum technologies in composition and in organizing sound events or even combining them with visual events. And to this aim, we have to our disposal quantum random number generators. They are on the market. There are several companies that are producing their QSID is a company which is a spin-off of ICFO of our institute. Uh, we collaborate with the boss of the company, Carlos Abea and Jose Martinez and David Siraki. 
and these uh, and you process it to, to them we have access to uh, large sets of uh, quantum random numbers which we believe are genuinely random in contrast to all the random numbers generated by the classical random uh, number generator. So this is what we plan to use extensively in the organization on sound, sound events. G going further, we could think about using quantum correlations such as entanglement in the uh, in composition. So that would com be combining quantum random generators with appropriate uh, correlations. So as we are in the very beginning of our artistic research project, we'd like to uh, demonstrate the very simple and very initial um, experiment that we have done. So in previous examples of music compositions, we saw that allowing randomness is in, a, in only to function within the context of a controlled system. So we take this same method and uh, we will we use the quantum random number generator to reorganize musical events, just like what Cage did for music of changes. So for this, we use the uh, recording of free improvisation by Jordina Mila Benzeni. By the way, a fantastic young, talented, <laughs> uh, prepared piano free improviser. So we took uh, one of her recordings um, and her first 20 sound events, which sounds like this. And we reordered the musical events using the quantum random number generator, which sounds like this. So uh, this will be the end of our talk. So conclusion. the conclusion is very simple. It's uh, enjoy science and art and beyond, but please do it seriously. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Maciej. Thank you, Reiko. Thank you very much for your very interesting uh, presentation.